Before we even get started, I want to set the tone of this conversation. I am here second day without power. <laughs> I have no internet at the house. I haven't showered in three days. Oh, that's what that is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's not that bad, but it's pretty damn bad. Now, go ahead and tell me how, how great it was. How you forgot the whole, I'm eating rice here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Starving, as you can see. That's going to be in our tag So go club. ahead and tell me how, how this wasn't a big deal, please. Well, Andy? Hi, welcome to DTLT <laughs> today. Hi, how are you? I'm we're we're talking about the hurricane and whether a natural disaster can be hyped or not. Some people think it can be. Um, I've got my opinions, but Jim, go ahead. What did, what'd you think of the hurricane? A big yawn? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, let's be clear, though, because Tim's pretend, pretending like I'm trying to kind of generalize. Unlike national media, I don't have to generalize because I don't appeal to. Oh, Miles and Tess, hi. Hi, Tess and Miles. I don't have to appeal to everyone. I only have to appeal to the local people who were following it. And the whole hurricane cast on DS-106 Ready we did was basically, I went out on an hourly basis and said, here's the situation of the hurricane in Fredericksburg. Mm -hmm. Now what happened, Tim was, you know, reporting from Richmond and it was, I could hear the winds blowing. It was serious yeah. there. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I don't know wow, why, Fredericksburg, I mean, sure there's a, you know, meteorological reason. Mm -hmm. We got basically a bad rainstorm. That's mm -hmm. all it was. Yeah. We got missed. We got I'm lucky. not saying, I mean, look, Vermont got <clears throat> crushed. Right. Parts of uh, North Carolina, if you saw those pictures in the Outer Banks, not to know, you should look at this online, the Outer Banks got crushed. Yeah. Like, route, route 12? Yeah, once again near Hatteras, they had yeah. several sections of road that were just, just missing. eaten away or missing or oh. completely upended. Yeah. Um, and they had, I think, it was, I think it was back in Isabel where they had a new inlet that was created because of the hurricane and they called it Isabel Inlet. I don't know if that's still the case or not, but, and I'm, I think it's too early to say like what's gotten created and, and that sort of thing with this particular storm. But um, there's some amazing, some amazing pictures out there. Well, um, it, it blew me away because I get on Twitter <clears throat> and luckily I was able to because one, my father-in-law has a, um, a house generator. So I, we hook up the house generator. Is I've he got a survivalist? The, he's, <laughs> He's he's a little uh, how would I say he's a little miserly with the generator. It's a it's sort of like oh you've had your shower, boom. <laughs> it's like you don't need anything else. Does he and watch I, the show? Tractor no. beam off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's so, like Obi Wan at the tractor. As soon as I found out we could hook the modem to the you know room that had the power going and everything and have internet, I was like oh this is great. And so I'm going on Twitter because we didn't have Verizon signal. Couldn't use my phone at all for calls, text messages, nothing. It's completely dead. No power. And I get on Twitter and I see people on there going, man, where, where'd the storm go? Why'd the media hype this up? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Right. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, it's easy for someone to say that, but at the same time, you've, I'm, we've got the TV going and they're talking about how a woman in Newport News lost her, her baby um, in the storm and everything. And I'm like, oh, yeah, tell her that the storm was hyped up, that there wasn't enough coverage about the dangers of the hurricane. Right. I mean, it well, seems the, like they were <clears throat> disappointed about the fact that it didn't come to them, which I well, don't really get. Well, that's the whole generalization argument. And Andy, interrupt if I didn't mean to jump on you. But that's okay. one of the things that's interesting is that we have the media and the means now to do targeted searches for information that's useful to us yeah. and the fact that so many people are bemoaning how bad the coverage was on cnn or weather or you know fox god forbid it's like <clears throat> why are you following those channels it's right. like martha made this point already and she said she's gonna write a blog post about it but i'll steal it because she's not here is <laughs> you know she spent the whole basic weekend following local small media mm -hmm. to find out what happened in north carolina what was happening here and you know, just being able to contact people like we can with Twitter and Facebook or whatever, right. it changes the whole dynamic. It's like why people are depending upon CNN and then people like, uh, what's his name, Jarvis, yeah. reacting so strongly. It's like, you know right. what? I'm not so interested in all that because I'm doing my own little thing and following it. And I like the hype personally because I kind of, mm -hmm. it's I like to be part of it. Sure. But even when I tried to with DS-106 radio, it's like there was nothing to hype about at Fredericksburg. Yeah. Right. Uh, early, early on, Jeff Jarvis had, I think he used a hashtag, um, storm porn. And it was this basic idea that, that all the, the big wigs, all the big networks were covering this, this story in such a way that he thought it was almost, 
in a way damaging and and almost the the boy who cried wolf where you you relentlessly say how bad it's going to be and then if it doesn't turn out to be that way people stop watching the networks and but, and in many ways i would argue that people should stop watching it for for not just the the repetition about Irene, but any other news story that's out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Politics. Here's, here's right. my question, though, with that. What's the alternative? Because yeah. I can guarantee you that Jeff Jarvis, along with everyone else, would be up in ar arms if all of the major TV networks said, yeah, probably not going to be a big deal. I mean, it's the mm -hmm. hurricane's coming, but, you know, I mean, maybe get yourself an extra jug of water or something, but it's yeah. not going to be a big deal. And, I mean, 18 people died, and, you know, and that's not even all the numbers counted yet because they still don't even have access to all the areas mm -hmm. where the hurricane hit. And so it's sort of like, what would have been a big deal at this point? Yeah. If this wasn't a big deal, mm -hmm. what would have been? And what would have been a good response for the media then if they had just said, yeah, it's probably not going to happen? They, he talked about the repetition, and, and here's what I heard repeated over and over. Be prepared, get a kit, stay indoors. Now, some of the other stuff, and, and, and actually, I, I get a kick out of the Weather Channel people going out into it and, and watching oh, yeah. their clothes, you know, flap in the breeze and that sort of thing. And, you know, I know that they're doing it for an effect, and, and they're a little sensationalistic when it comes to these storms. You can t but you can also tell that, you know, that's their job that they love. You know, that's the yeah. stuff that they really enjoy doing. And so I don't mind watching them do it. The problem that I have is that then every other network has to have their guy out in the, in the wind demonstrating the same thing and that's and that's the part of Jarvis's point that I agree with is that there's just too much of that and and why don't we concentrate on the people who cover this stuff really well well and the thing that I think is also a problem is this idea of 24 7 coverage and right. I saw this even you see it all the time with like the headline news networks where they literally do have to run a channel 24 7 and figure out how are they even going to fill it with content so it's just mm -hmm. crap content that they're putting out there and so they love right. storms like this because yep. then they've got their content they'll just keep going back to their weathermen they'll yeah. keep those rate those videos on loop and i get <laughs> that uh, but it, that seems to become even more of a problem with the local news channels when things mm -hmm. like this happen. They feel like, oh, we can't just show uh, Bones or we can't show Criminal Minds or any other television show because mm -hmm. we need to go to this breaking news content where yet again our reporters out there standing in the rain talking about how it could might become bad, maybe. Yeah, and I'm, I, I'm wondering, as I'm, as I'm watching this coverage, I'm wondering, so what if some other news story you know, in, infects the, the media during this hurricane. You know, how, how do they gauge what the importance is? What, what happens if there is, you know, an, a huge earthquake on the other end of the country? And, you know, how right. do they balance that? And I wonder if, if they can even make that decision intelligently. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. And, or what if, we, what if we were able to predict, that, what if we were able to say, you're going to have a hurricane um, on on this particular date, and it's going to be this magnitude, you know, what would the hype have been? I think a lot of people would have said, well, here's what's going to happen, but there's all this unpredictability that you don't know. And we got lucky with the hurricane. I think that's good news. Yeah. It could have been worse, right. um, but it wasn't, and, and I think we're thankful for that. And, and one of the things that I also think about is that apparently there were some people who didn't get the message, and I, now I don't want to, I don't want to denigrate any of the people, but, you know, there would be, have been less death if, if people did stay indoors. I understand that some people need to be out and, and traveling or, or got caught out there, um, but there are people who are wantonly, like, going out and driving just to be in it. Yeah, and there's situations where there's no traffic right. and they don't know what to do when there's a, you know, a traffic signal that's out. People just barrel through the intersection as opposed to what they should do is turn it into a four-way stop. So there's things like that, that that people still don't get after being told over and over again about this. And I wonder if the repetition is, is harmful for that reason or whether we're just not listening, we're not listening to the right places. I think Martha's idea about where to listen is, yeah. is great is that you know, take well, the pieces those, that make sense to you. Well, I'm, a couple of things. First, I'm disappointed that my kids no longer want to watch me. They want to watch Popeye. <laughs> I'm pissed at you, Miles and Tess, and I'm coming for you. But Brian and Alto, thanks for staying wow. true. Popeye. But one of the things that's like, you know, did you guys follow in Virginia Beach? There was those streakers. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was watching drunk. it. The Weather Channel yeah. guy's out there, and he says, I don't understand, you know, why these people aren't indoors, and the guy's flashing his goods. Yeah, yeah. but the whole thing is, is like, the, the actual hype culture around that makes that 
you know, and somewhat a possibility. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, people are going to get on this right. thing and so they're doing it. It's like the thing I can't stop thinking about in all this is, you know, how does this relate to something like Katrina? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Like, you know, think about the hype cycle around Katrina, which I think was relatively small compared to what we yep. had for something like Irene, and is it because Katrina was such a tragedy, and yep. it was, mm -hmm. and the questions that don't get brought up is like, you're, you're either stupid for not listening, or you're smart for listening to the news, or maybe something in between. It's like, what about the socioeconomic realities of people who can't do anything? And you know, right. we got lucky with Irene for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Vermont got killed, Brian Alexander's up there showing some crazy pictures, so I'm feeling for those people, but you know, if this was a really devastating storm, you know, and it did devastate beyond, I'm not saying it wasn't, but beyond like Tim not being able to take a shower and all his little Western concerns. <laughs> like, <laughs> My beyond first world that, problems. <laughs> I mean, you know, there is real situations with this of a kind of structural problem that we can't get out of. And I think, you know, New Orleans is the real lesson in that. It's like, right. you know, the hype doesn't really save lives, right. I don't think. And I think, you it, know, what really would save lives is a true kind of FEMA action and you know, a certain amount of common sense certainly saves lives, but I mean, some of this stuff goes beyond common sense, like how well your house is built. You know, how how you know tight your community is. It's it's still you have a car. It still becomes this competition. You know, Irene wasn't as big as Isabel, so we're disappointed about that, and I I still don't get no, that. That's yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, you know, it, it, we're thankful that Irene wasn't as big as Isabel. I mean, one of the reasons that Isabel was so big is because it went straight over Virginia and headed out towards Lake Erie. So it, it completely engulfed this area. And I, and I lived it also in a different place where I had more trees. But there's a lot more damage, a lot more power outages in Fredericksburg than there was um, you know, for this storm, for Irene. Yeah. The, the other thing, though, is that Irene, all told, I think had as many power outages. They were just in different places. And different places, like in Virginia Pe Beach, like the, the family that lost their son, with a tree that fell on their house, yeah. you know, that w it, it was a devastating storm to them. And I just, I, I do have a problem with, with minimizing it or saying that there's, there's too much hype when it comes to, to, to reporting about natural disasters. Yes, there's some silliness, and I would like to get rid of the silliness. I would like to think that our news coverage would be completely, you know, serious and, uh, and above board when they're trying to inform us. But, I, but I'm... Our news media is not about informing us. They're, that is not their motivation. Their 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 motivation yeah. is to is to hype Irene to be bigger than the last storm, and so, so that they can get viewers and so that they can get viewers exactly. So I mean that's what is driving all this, and that's that's the problem that I have with the analysis of of somebody like Jarvis who who is is, is pretending like they their job is to inform us. Well, my, I'm probably as guilty as anybody of in the heat of the moment like wanting the storm to be bigger i was doing some <coughs> broadcasting on the radio and i was like yeah. oh man i love this and bring the trees down and bring the rain and everything but i have to say the next day when i was out there and there was a tree in our driveway and i was cutting wood all day and today my back hurts i'm sort of like thank god it wasn't as bad as it could have been because right. i mean we had one tree down and we spent seven hours out there chainsaws cutting it up lugging the wood to the ditch next door and everything and trying to help out some people next door to us and I mean mm -hmm. it was just insane just from the little amount that it was and it really was for me like I felt like everything that I put on Twitter I should have been putting the first world problems hashtag with because I exactly. seriously felt like this is not as big a deal as it could have been that's a that's a good point somebody tweeted you know during during the hurricane someone in Beirut or or someone who knows something about Beirut I, I can't remember but they said you know we've got power outages in our country right now, and it doesn't have anything to do with a hurricane. It, yeah, it has yeah. more to do with our our political situation. Um, so you know there there is that, but well, but think also about Irene versus like Libya, right? Mm -hmm. Like I mean, think about what the freedom fighters or whatever you want to call them sure. in Libya are doing, and you know how many of them go down on a daily basis and dealing with this atrocious tyranny. Well, but <clears> you know, Al Roker <laughs> tweeted something about, "Are you kidding me? You're calling this hype when these many people died?" And someone said. Well, more people die in Iraq, and so and so. I said, okay, and that's bad, but that doesn't make our coverage of a major event any less. Well, it does you know, make it. Important. It does make it more problematic when you're not covering international affairs, mm -hmm. which is something that U.S. media intentionally and traditionally has done. Sure. So you have a 24-hour news cycle about a storm that I'm not saying is insignificant, Tim. Yeah. But I am saying is, you know, does not define the world. 
but mm-hmm. the news media, and this is the point you're making about Jarvis, does this regularly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not just, Irene just seems to be the occasion. It does this regularly. I mean, how much really good reporting have we had on Afghanistan and Iran and what's really happening there? None. You know, and if it's you're doing it, it's between. not coming from any major network. Right. I mean, there's basically a blackout on news that's important. Mm-hmm. And Irene's not that it's unimportant, but I don't feel like, you know, that Al Roker or anyone who says that is being intentionally necessarily fair because mm-hmm. we're not giving everything, you know, the same amount of attention. Yeah, right. And well, I mean, but for me, in terms of viewership, they're going to have more U.S. viewers. So I would rather them see more coverage of Irene right now in the past couple of days. Now, if we were talking like last week and they were giving more coverage to American Idol than they were Libya or something <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that, yeah, I'm going to purpose. Well, I wouldn't I'm be surprised be, if they did. Uh, they probably would, yeah, and I'd be equally as outraged about that. But you well, know, let's think about it. I, I mean, think you give them a bit of a pass when there's a major U.S. event happening that they say, you know what, let's focus on that major U.S. event because we have a lot of U.S. people watching our station right now mm-hmm. and wanting to know what's happening with this. But I think that's different than suggesting that any kind of media is trying to. To aim for an informed public. Oh, sure. I don't think that's <clears throat> what the goal is. The other problem that I've had with this during this during the whole coverage is that the event is still not over yet. You st- we still have issues of flooding. We still have issues of dams that are that are on the red line in terms of about to break kind of thing. Um, so we still don't really know the full impact. We st- there there are plenty of people who who die in the flooding after the hurricane. Um, so to say that this is, have, has been overhyped and it didn't live up to its potential, we're still not there yet. And I hope that it doesn't live up to that potential. But we've still got a ways to go, and, and we just kind of need to let this stuff, um, you know, play itself out. The, the other point that I wanted to make about Jarvis, and, and I, that I do agree, is that his basic, where he leaves this is to say, News organizations, media in general, need to figure out where the value add comes in. You know, we've got all these these small networks that can report out this stuff in in this quick and easy manner. Let's take all that, aggregate them, and then figure out where to where to to add to it. They should be doing things like you know, repeating where the shelters are, repeating what to do in a storm, as opposed to. You know, here we've got some great footage of somebody out in in Virginia Beach with the naked guys running behind them, or or this tree just fell down on a power line and, and here's a fire. Um, that's good information, but um, you know somebody else is going to cover that in a better way. Let's stop repeating ourselves. And, and Jarvis makes a good point there. Well, there's also, I mean, you think about <coughs> 2000 before September 11th. Think about the news cycle leading up for the summer. Of, does you guys remember what the topic was? Right before September 11th changed everything. Summer of the shark, baby. Summer of the shark. And that, to me, is just like exactly what you're saying. Yeah, Jarvis may be saying that's what big news industries need to do. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, it's just kind of maybe ethical call. But frankly, it's not going to happen. Like, they are going to (laughs) go for the most sensational story, even if it's made up like the summer of the shark. There was no more shark attacks that summer than there are on a regular basis. It Mm -hmm. just became the news cycle because they needed to exploit. Yep. And that's why I think thinking about localized and smaller news agencies or even people yeah. as our kind of correspondents has some value. Now, the problem is, I mean, how do you organize that to do some real investigative mm-hmm. reporting? There's a lot of things we can't let go of. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't think our major media networks, CNN or you know, Fox or any of them are in any danger of doing serious investigative reporting. I, so we can leave that alone I think and go to something else. I think that's what we need to do is, is really start to educate people to, to try to find those best of breed, you know, news outlets or, or ways of getting the news to really truly inform them. Well, and I think citizen journalism is going to become this huge thing here. And the question of it is, how do you aggregate that? And how do you make the good stuff rise to the top and make sure that people see what they need to see for it? Right now, ironically, a lot of people are taking pictures and video and everything. Mm -hmm. And where are they uploading it? They're putting it on Facebook on these news organizations' websites. They're giving it right back to them. And those news organizations are just saying, okay, as soon as he comes back from this video of of our guy standing out there by the ocean, then we'll pull up a couple Facebook pictures of the, what these people sent us. You don't need the news organization. We can become this media outlet ourselves and mm-hmm. we can aggregate it in the right way. Yeah, and it, it, that brings up a, a, an issue that, that I think about that almost goes to the corporatization of education. 
there is this kind of corporatization of, of, you know, newsman, newsman or newswoman on the spot. Mm -hmm. With CNN's I report, Fox I think has something called You report. It's this idea that you're taking this citizen journalist and you're making them a star, but you're almost kind of corporatizing yeah. that that yeah. reporting that they're doing when they really could be doing the stuff out on their own yeah. and someone else could be finding it. Do and the work for us. Exactly. And we'll just monetize exactly. it. Throw some ads on. I mean, not right. go back. It's a ten years to the day almost now, and you mm -hmm. know, not go back to 9/11 again. But the thing that struck me most about September 11th, when I was in New York City and that was happening, is if you turned on the major news networks, that was the only time in my life I can remember there was no advertising. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there, it's like everyone in that kind of job had been hit over the head with a bat. Right. And they all were sitting there looking at you stunned. Like they had some real insane news they didn't understand <laughs> and they couldn't spin yet. Right. They yeah. did, but they couldn't spin it yet. Yeah, that's right. And like the emperor's clothes were laid yeah. bare for yeah. like 24 hours. It wasn't on the, the fancy news. 3D graphics yeah. and the cutaway to this or that and it or whatever. Was basically it was basically also the time where we saw the emergence, right, of social media as an alternative means to get real information like where are people yep. how do we locate people blogs mm -hmm. came up as a kind of that's when they kind of i mean if the iran election is when twitter came into its being mm -hmm. yeah. i think it was september 11th where blogs both as reactions politically mm -hmm. but also as just people out there sharing their insane experiences True. or looking for others mm -hmm. i mean it was this weird kind of moment where that distributed network was far more valuable in a real moment of horror mm -hmm. than some centralized talking head who's basically trying to sell you something right. at the same time of inform you and the two are often competing mm -hmm. It's not just like the one, you know, just that's why I think Jarvis's view is kind of uninteresting to me. He's like, how can we still make these business models viable? It's like, when the hell were they viable? Yeah, or valuable. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe well, that's that's cynical, but. And I'm just saying it's going to get big. I mean, I already read, you know, with the earthquake that we had, which wasn't a major event on Twitter. I think they said <laughs> there were 40,000 tweets in the first mm -hmm. couple seconds. Right. after the event exactly. happened. So well, and things like that are going to be more important. Well, and it was interesting. I, I use TweetDeck as my Twitter thing, and, and um, watching the Irene hashtag go past was just, it was a blur. Right. Um, and, and that was interesting because, I mean, that kind of thing happens with different events. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, again, the important is, is how, do you, how do you take out from that information what you need to know and yeah. what we can get information well, There from is it. no way, which I kind of like. <laughs> I mean, frankly, I think that's part of the joy of it. I mean, but talking about things we like and don't like, one of our commenters in the chat, Brian, says, <laughs> I didn't like September 11th. Okay. It's good to do you know. Wanna, do you, do you want to elaborate about that, Brian? Would you like to, to can we? Uh, I'm, I'm glad he's on record. It's <laughs> exactly. being anti 9-11. Didn't like it. Yeah, not a fan. It was not good. Not a fan at all. I think that's a, a pull-out quote. If I think we ought to wrap things up here. but I think we've probably gone a little long today. Here's hoping, in addition to me having power and internet back tonight, that most people are safe from this thing. With, uh, Absolutely. Well, more important, more I mean, important fish to fry. <laughs> yeah, frankly, I mean, that's, you know, no one really wants to deal with the... We're, 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 I mean, as a culture right now, we're seduced by apocalypse, yeah. but we right. would be the probably... You know, we wouldn't know what the hell to do if oh, it came. Yeah. We're yeah. weaklings in this. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, good luck. Remember White Noise by Don DeLillo? That novel basically is like mm. there's a cloud of apocalypse that comes over a town. Mm. And no one is any use because no one has, now has to do anything anymore. Like, <laughs> right. no one can explain how a TV works or how to build one or right. a computer right. or, you know, in that case, a refrigerator. It's like we'd be useless in the event of a real apocalypse. Like, the only person who would probably survive is Tom Woodward. Yeah. <laughs> I completely agree. And on that and note, Antonella. I think we should have <laughs> Tom Antonella. Tom and Antonella, and maybe they would get together and they would be the future, Adam and Wow. Eve. A race of superhumans. <laughs> Superhuman <Yeah>. Italians. <laughs> on that note, yeah. there's several notes to leave you on today. Yeah. This was our... ETLT today. Thanks for watching. Take it out. Go. And stay tuned for the Marvel Learning! <laughs>